Uh, there's a considerable number of complexities. Uh, to, to begin with, most banks are not familiar with APIs at all. The vast number of banks, there's 20,000 banking institutions in Europe, and uh, the majority of them don't even have uh, ESBs or integration technology. So APIs, uh, there's a requirement now with PSD2 starting. PSD2 is just a starting point where you have to expose a few, you have to expose information to third parties so that they can then execute payments using, using the bank as, uh, as just the, the repository of the money, right? So a lot of banks have to get used to the concept that they're going to have to actually expose their information and, and they're very used to the opposite concept of full security. Of course, the exposure via APIs is very secure already. So to begin with, you have this concept of exposing APIs for payments as a starting point. And later on, the bank can expose APIs for a lot more functionality that enables much more digital banking. That means that banking transactions will be secure, faster, uh, more predictable, with more information to the customer consumer, uh, and just all around uh, more efficiency. So there, there are many, many, uh, there, it, from a pure theoretical standpoint at the top level, it's, it's simple enough to describe, but uh, the implementation can be involved. Fiorano PSD2 is really a uh, quite a complete solution. It has not only, because to implement PSD2, the bank has to first off expose a number of APIs relating to payments, like relating to the fact that it has to allow TPPs, uh, third party providers, like a PISP, which is a payment initiation service provider, or an AISP, uh, account information service provider. You have to, they have to connect to the bank uh, and in a secure way access account information uh, of, of uh, users that have been onboarded onto the PSD2 system, right, and with full permissions. Uh, so besides the APIs, we also have an ESB layer as part of the solution because a lot of banks don't actually have ESBs. A lot of them do, and they can use those ESBs, but our solution is sort of almost prepackaged pre optionally so that implementation of the APIs is quite straightforward and templatized. So it really saves them time and money uh, in terms of getting the implementation done because with some of the larger banks, if you actually do everything from scratch through just pure programming and services, just don't use too many products, uh, you can do it, but it takes a lot of time. So with the Fiorano solution, you have APIs, you're going to have the, the ESB solution. We also have a uh, fraud management and detection. Uh, we, are, we are a partner product. And so the whole thing is just packaged together and the implementation is quite straightforward. It's really a question of uh, setup, point and click, and uh, you can be up and running in about uh, three to five months, depending on the situation, depending on how, how easily the bank makes the information available uh, to, to, to the products and to the services team. Well, Fiorano 11 is, is, is quite a comprehensive platform. Uh, it has uh, both a very comprehensive API management solution, which is uh, really on par with the other enterprise level API products on the market today. And it's also got a, a very, very comprehensive enterprise level uh, enterprise service bus with a peer-to-peer -peer distributed architecture. So one of the key aspects of the architecture is that it works uh, uh, across hybrid platforms. It works fully on the cloud, fully within the enterprise, or in a hybrid environment. It can work uh, both across, you know, some of the elements of your infrastructure could be in the cloud, some could be on-premise. And this is actually a very, very classic mode of operation for a lot of, a lot of, uh, enterprises. Uh, most of the smaller banks probably just use a private cloud type of implementation where, uh, where the infrastructure is often in a, in a private cloud. It's not in a public cloud like Amazon. Uh, so we work, we work in all the environments and it's a very scalable and quite a mature solution. It's been around the block uh, and, and is in deployment in, in, many, in all, all, all continents or in multiple industries. 
So it's tested over time. Uh, there's a very significant impact of the new regulations on uh, both the payment experience, the payment process and cross-border payments. Uh, because the, the new the standard requires all banks, all payments to go through TPPs, third parties, PISPs and AISPs, right? PISPs for payments. So a lot of banks will obviously want to become PISPs because if they the relationship of the customer is going to be with the PISP, with the payment provider. So all banks, or especially large banks, are rushing to become PISPs and to implement the whole infrastructure. Because all banks, by law, have to open up their information on account information to all TPPs. So if the bank uh, does not actually very efficiently court its existing customers to uh, to stay with the bank as the PISP, those customers then have the option in any case of going to other PISP. This is going to be more competition. There's going to be more competition for the banks and that's just the fact of it. So right now every bank has its own customers and the customer sticks with the bank. Uh, what you're going to have in, with, with the PSD2 standard in full flow is that even though you have a bank account with let's say HSBC or Barclays, you might choose to use a different PISP for efficiency reasons. It's entirely up to you. Of course, if you're happy with the PISP implementation at the bank itself, that's fine. But you do have a choice. Choice for efficiency, choice for, for uh, costs. Uh, and so it's, it's really good for the world. There'll be a lot more competition, a lot more players in the market. It's just going to become a hyper-competitive market. And uh, that's always a good thing.